Hearings? No, sir. Reports? I have no. Resolutions? What? I have to read this resolution? No. No. Yeah. No. No. No, I think later you yeah. mentioned the resolution. Yeah. Hmm. That might be a return item. <laughs> Any old business? New business. Um, you should have before your memorandums that will, that's dated October 22nd. Is those items that were discussed at our special meeting on October the 19th. And with that, Megan, I'll turn it over to you if you want to go through. Yeah, sure. Just know if you don't touch it. <laughs> I'm going to try not to touch Mike. Um, so I wanted to go through quickly uh, some outstanding issues and actually request um, for a, a few uh, small <coughs> modifications to the, the revised draft that you saw on October 15th. Um, the first is that, as you know, we, we met on Saturday, October 19th, and we passed along the guidance to uh, the consultants in hopes that we would get everything um, addressed in the October 22nd uh, version of the plan. But I can tell you that at least we noted one thing that was not included, which was the ADA transition um, plan. So um, my request is um, al allowing us, I, I think you could approve the plan with the condition that we make sure that all of the revisions that were um, authorized on the 19th are, are included in the draft that is um, given to the city council. There were a couple other outstanding issues, too, in addition to the um, guidance from October 19th. The first one is um, I passed along the guidance to the consultant, but he, they did express concern about the addition of three neighborhood centers um, and felt that the concerns that were expressed by the Planning Commission could be addressed through the, um, through the um, clause about um, grandfathering in or non-conforming uh, uses in the new place types. Um, and let me go just through what their concerns were and then maybe um, we can discuss if we want to change um, your recommendations from the 19th. Um, so the consultants felt like um, one of these areas actually did make sense from a planning perspective, which is the area that is in Hammerburg and Atherton. And the reason why they thought that one um, did make sense but the other two didn't is because of the density around this area and the, the services that are um, near there. The density is much higher, not only in the single family residential area, but there is um, a significant new multifamily development that borders um, this area. Um, the quality and size of the commercial development here, it's, it's um, more substantial um, and it includes um, things like medical uses and um, a post office which are more consistent with the neighborhood center um, designation. For the other two areas, they felt that um, although they're, that the existing commercial uses under the grandfathering um, rights could continue to operate, but um, these areas are pretty embedded in the, the neighborhood fabric and are unlikely to attract strong commercial investment. And so if you allow these, if you change the use, what will likely happen, and they've seen this happen in other um, areas throughout the country, you may a re the result may, if those um, businesses, which are pretty compatible right now with the neighborhood, close, you might end up with more things like um, liquor stores or bars or pawn shops or other uses that um, you may not really want within a neighborhood um, area. Um, as I stated before, the with the current designation, um, 
the existing uses can remain, and they can remain in perpetuity. Um, in the grandfathering clause, which we can address through the zoning, you, the Planning Commission, can determine how long um, the uses, uh, the, the non-conforming use can remain. Usually a lot of cities um, spell out if the, the use is um, not operational for a year or two, uh, those non-conforming rights um, disappear, but it's up to you as the Planning Commission to decide, you know, what um, conditions under which uh, people lose their non-conforming rights. Um, they also were concerned that if we add too many of these like small um, commercial mixed-use areas, um, we might be potentially diluting the viability of other areas because now we have to think about how we equitably <coughs> distribute resources um, within the areas and um, you know the, the limited resources would be spread even thinner and it's harder to cluster development in areas to encourage viability. Um, uh, the areas that we identified are all served by other commercial uses. And then finally, I think the one concern they had is why these three? Um, we have answers a little bit for Am Hammerberg and Atherton, but there's actually a lot more um, throughout the city of these really small kind of neighborhood um, centers that we didn't change, um, didn't code as neighborhood center. So what's, what's the justification for, th for these three? So with that, you know, after her hearing their recommendation, it seems they feel strongly that Hammerberg and Atherton would fit the criteria for a neighborhood center, but the other two do not. Um, I told them that um, I would bring that to your attention. Um, for discussion tonight and then leave it up to you if you decide that you disagree with this recommendation um, then we can go back to the the previous on the 19th discussion from the Commission so just um, to make sure that I'm clear because I, I think I had helped to, to raise this issue initially by pointing to the one about Lita and circle, which I think is probably the smallest of the three areas. Um, it's really just one small block. Um, so you're saying that the uses would be able to remain in perpetuity, and that includes if, for instance, the, you know, rotor rooter shop that's there right now were to close and get sold to a different type of service establishment, that that would still be permitted within that existing area yes I mean you can write the typically most grandfather or non-conforming use clauses allow businesses to be sold um, and that use to continue even if there's a transfer of ownership um, and I, I'm pretty sure that's how our code reads currently in Sherry's nodding yes <laughs> so um, yes thank you Rob and that would be similar for the Flushing and Chevrolet intersection? Yes, yes. Okay. And in every other, because we have... And as well as every mm -hmm. other one throughout the whole city. Mm -hmm. So it's not like someone automatically assuming because it's not in there, or in this case, they're being eliminated. Exactly. That's not the case. Right. Nothing is being eliminated and so forth. Right. Okay. And um, we actually, because we knew that this concern was expressed in the revised October 22nd version, we expressed what grand, you know, non-conforming use uses would be, and they explained that you know selling a prop property wouldn't you wouldn't lose your non-conforming rights. Any other comments, concerns? Just had a comment about the um, attracting businesses such as a liquor store. I don't think any neighborhood wants to attract that. So leaving that, you know, for Atherton and Hammerburg, there's an empty 7-Eleven there. So does that mean that that's open to become whatever as well? Well, whatever is allowed in the zone. But yes, I mean, it, it could be. It could be. I mean, that's the, when you when you have a neighborhood center. Mm -hmm. 
commercial uses would be allowed. Of course, the so, other side of the coin is, is those areas that already are grandfathered in, who already have liquor stores or bars or whatever it may be, those already exist. Right. I mean, the benefit of this is, especially a lot of these small areas where they might have a party store over time, um, it's likely that those um, businesses won't be viable. So when they do close, then you can actually eliminate that use in the future. That's the, the benefit of keeping the place types as they are. Any other comments, concerns? What is the desire of the commission at this point concerning those three neighborhood centers? I think unless there's a major objection amongst us by consensus. By consensus. Well, I'm going to still ask the question okay. about right now the way the Hammerberg and Atherton Road area is zoned is it zoned right now so that a liquor store can go there, or yes or no? And I don't, I don't know. Yes. So it's already zoned, so that wouldn't really change anything for that by making it a center? Right, no right. change. Okay. So is there a consensus, Elizabeth? Yes, um, I'm comfortable accepting the staff recommendation that would have the Hammerberg and Atherton be designated neighborhood center, but the other two areas, Lita and Circle, and the uh, Chevrolet Avenue area, um, revert to the original land use okay. that had been proposed. Is that consensus by? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's go on. Okay. Um, issue number two is actually not really an issue, but just to let you know that we did clarify the grandfathering clause and I thought that was important to kind of point out because we had heard that um, I think on October 19th um, in, in previous um, meetings. Um, issue number three. Um, so Mr. Chair, so, yes. just, so for issue number two, just for the record, it's an informational item. Yes. Correct, all right. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Issue number three, I think there was concern um, expressed, which I think is, is um, a good thing to point out regarding the University Avenue um, core place type, um, which of course, as you know, what the vision of it is, which is a kind of a more high density workforce housing, um, institutional uses, um, it does allow green innovation uses and, and the primary reason why we did as we've discussed before a lot of that was because we included Chevy in the hole in this place type and we anticipated that we could have some of these uses in Chevy in the hole but you know in other areas where we're trying to foster institutional uses and kind of this higher density um, residential there could be a mismatch um, with that use in this place type. So we could either um, eliminate some of those green innovation uses or um, one possibility is kind of address the, those green innovation place types in a similar way that we did with neighborhood centers, which is allow them only via development.